Hi everybody, welcome to an exciting roundtable discussion um, with three awesome people. And right now you're talking to, or listening to, the host, Paul Dosky, with the lovely fiance. Tessa Baker. And with us, we got, like I said, three amazing guests. And I couldn't be happier to help spread the word about this interesting and pretty thought out book i will say plus we're going to be talking about an upcoming event that takes place in california as of april 13th and we'll talk a little bit more about that and uh yeah let's get right into it so we have ron i'm gonna really screw up your last name here so oh, it's just, it's just ricky it? <laughs> <laughs> just Ricky, like Ricky Ricardo or Ricky Tiki Tabby or any Ricky you want. Ah, uh, I guess I've never seen it spelled like that. So <laughs> that's a new way of, I guess, spelling everything nowadays. <laughs> it's, well, it's, nice it's to meet you, Rami. The language which nobody has ever heard of, but it's like an Arctic <laughs> people. It's pretty. It's a little <laughs> bit rare, I guess. I would say it's rare. But that's awesome. We need some rare names in our in this uh, world, anyway. And everybody, we got the lovely Betsy Baker with us. Hi, everybody. And then we got Jeffrey Sardin. Hi, nice to be here. Well, thank you guys for uh, coming on, and Ron, thank you for uh, messaging us as well to help you promote your book and the event as well. Now. Your book is essays on the occult, cult, uh, the occult, cult, uh, blah, blah, cult classic film, The Evil Dead. And now, how did you guys like decide on making a book for this particular film? For um, what kind of reason? Like, is it just that you guys just like it so much that you thought it would be kind of cool to really dive into it? Um, Ron, I'll start with you. Uh, what's funny is that Jeff invited me to uh, come and speak at the University of Houston at Victoria. So I went and spoke there. Afterwards, we were in his office. He had some Evil Dead, uh, I think it was the film, in his office. I think I just casually mentioned to him, oh, that'd be interesting to do a an anthology on the Evil Dead. And he was like, sure. I mean, yeah. I think Jeff's going to have to chime in here and make sure my memory is correct. But uh, I think it was uh, that simple, right, Jeff? Yeah, yeah. It was uh, after the, the talk you gave uh, at our university. We were uh, in my office, and there's a picture of me interviewing Bruce Campbell for another magazine oh, years, and years and years ago. And, and uh, Ron commented on it about doing maybe a book on the Evil Dead because we were both fans, and Ron has deep connections to to uh, Michigan and, and uh, the film and cult and books and cultural products of Michigan. And I've always been interested in Evil Dead just as a fan and uh, uh, had been kind of half thinking about following up an earlier book I'd done, an anthology on another author uh, with another anthology. And Evil Dead seemed like a really good project to do. Hmm. That's pretty, pretty impressive. Now, I, another thing that I noticed too is like, the many lives of the Evil Dead is like over 200 pages, and it seemed to be divided into three chapters. That sounds like a lot of stuff, too, especially for three chapters. And yeah, now, we got. Yeah, oh, go I'm ahead. sorry. Go ahead. Uh, no, well, go ahead. it's an anthology. It's an anthology. So we uh, we gathered uh, chapters from about I think the the total number was 23 or 25. Uh, authors from all across the globe, and then we divided their work into sort of three major subsections. And the first section of the book is about the Evil Dead films that were released, uh, Evil Dead 1, 2, Army of Darkness, and the Fede Alvarez remake. Uh, and then the second section was on this incredible life the Evil Dead has had over the last 40 years in terms of being adapted into comics, into TV shows, into a musical. Uh, there was even a pornographic parody of the Evil Dead. And so this, this incredible life it's had outside of its main trajectory as film is very interesting to film and cultural scholars. Uh, and so that was the second section where essays about all these different adaptations of the Evil 
said. And then Ron managed to uh, get us uh, in contact with people who'd actually been in uh, involved in various productions of The Evil Dead. Uh, and so we gathered a couple of essays from uh, from uh, William Vincent, a film professor of Sam Raimi and the Michigan State crew, uh, and he wrote an essay for us. And Betsy Baker, who's here with us, uh, graced us to give us an essay uh, about her time uh, playing Linda. And then uh, uh, L. Michael Elliott was a uh, musical director on one of the Evil Dead musical productions across the country, and he contributed an essay as well. Uh, and so we've got this incredible range of film scholarship and uh, sort of uh, uh, people that had been associated with the films and the adaptations uh, of uh, different perspectives on the Evil Dead. Wow. And, you know, as a fan, as like even the original and I like the remake, it, it, it's, it's nice to see like an anthology like this where, you know, you really get to dive into everything and maybe learn something that we really didn't even know beforehand. Because, you know, like we we may have heard of this or that. But with your book, it could also open up new doorways that that we maybe never heard of before, or like you know, like information that never was really talked about, whether it not being on like the DVD special features or something. So, I mean, I mean, just looking at your book and all this stuff of everything that it includes with essays, I mean. I, I'm pretty impressed, to be honest. So, now how long? Well, we, we, oh, go. we can't take the credit for it. It's uh, it's the work of it's the collaborative work of uh, a whole bunch of people. Uh, Ron and I just helped put it together and, and contributed a little bit ourselves. But uh, but we certainly appreciate that. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely everybody that done it. I mean, I'm trying to look at like even the description for each one, but. There's a there's a lot of names and I just it's just a, really cool to see everybody's input into one book I guess yeah everybody coming together and collaborating to create such an awesome looking book and it looks like it's going to be a really good read yeah you know what's interesting is it, it reminds me of the Evil Dead itself it seems like what I've been reading about the Evil Dead is it's it, <laughs> it's, it's so interesting with Bruce Campbell's like uh, if Chins could kill about how, how collaborative it was and how uh, how much how much teamwork was it and how much hard work it was. That's why that's why I'm kind of excited for uh, Betsy to chime in because I, as being a fan, it's like uh, well, I don't know anything anything Betsy says I get I'll be interested. In. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. No, even really even if she's talking about Vermont in, in the beginning. <laughs> What's really interesting, and I and I was listening to both of you speak just now, but what's really interesting is that over the years, and it's been many, many years now, is the intrigue and the interest and the enigma continues about the stories and the fables and the tales of the making of Evil Dead and even, you know, Evil Dead 2 and Army of Darkness. Um, but that being said, primarily Evil Dead, the original one, because it was the original one that started this, mass you know following but I, I think some of the intrigue still lies today uh in terms of why i think this book is going to do so well is because people are are fans are interested in this production that was just really a little ragtag production i mean literally i mean we've read it we we're going to read more you know with this new book but we were literally a bunch of kids that said, okay, here's my suitcase, here's my suitcase. We got, we got into a van and drove from Michigan to um, Tennessee. I mean, we didn't sign any insurance papers. We didn't, you know, have any demands that there should be hot coffee or our trailer should be nice and warm because there was none of that. And the fact that this persistence, I think it was the persistence and the really the true grit of um, – a small cast of five people that's it five people and a small crew that were basically sam and rob and bruce's pals and family members you know put together this film and it was the true grid and it didn't just happen in three weeks um it happened over almost 
more than a year. I mean, let's just take even away the editing portion, which takes a long time on any film. But um, I think I was supposed to be in Tennessee for about three weeks, and I ended up there almost almost a full two months. And we were still filming in March and April and, and May and June, you know, nine months later for a number of reasons. Um, they would either add something, they would delete something, or we ran out of money. So it's intriguing to me, even though I was a part of it, that there is still this interest in all the all the tidbits of information and the trivia and more information that's uncovered. It, it's still <laughs> it's there's still a lot more information that's uncovered that I think Ron and Jeff have really gone to great depths of trying to uncover and and find out more. But it is it's really interesting. Well, I must say it is quite. I've, I've, I got to figure out the word here. It, it's quite interesting to read that, like, even now, um, I know this episode will be released beforehand, but I guess I, right now, I guess it would be appropriate to say it's a, almost a happy early birthday to the Evil Dead anyway, because I believe it's going to be 36 years old on April 15th of this year. So, Betsy, I, I, I gotta ask, after, you know, 36 years later, like, like, how do you still feel about, like, your role playing as Linda in The Evil Dead? Well, interestingly enough, and I, and, uh, you know, I, after the movie was over, we all left and went on our way. So there was a long time while, I was, you know, being married, raising a family, having another business, that I just forgot about it. It just went away. And, um, you know, back back then in the old century, um, we didn't have cell phones. We didn't have computers to keep in touch with people. So it's just been in the last 15, 20 years that I've even been aware that it had such a, a massive cult follow, following around the world. I mean, Teresa Tilly, a.k.a. Sarah York, and Ellen Sandweiss, the three actresses, we, you know, we've been to other countries around the world and go to conventions to meet the fans, I, we just had no idea that it had such a following. And um, again, I, I think it leads to that that mystery, that enigma, that that intrigue of you guys really did it, and you did it on just a you know a little bit of money and um, and the intrigue. You know, for so many years it was banned in so many countries. Um, it, it's it's sort of that's sort of funny, but it happened back then. So it's I, there are I think a lot of actors and actresses that say oh I don't want to either talk about that movie again I was embarrassed to be in that movie and that wasn't the case when we you know I, I to be honest with you I think all three actresses were glad that we actually stuck with it and we didn't think it would be we never thought it would be finished there was a point in which we never thought it would be finished and so the fact that we stayed there and nobody walked off the set and nobody quit was was also really a credit to all five actors and the crew as well be perfectly honest with you the way you describe that long process and almost uh feeling like it's never going to be finished is kind of the way a book feels as well on a much smaller scale but uh, I bet. uh but we certainly we can certainly identify with that because there's a lot of endless reads and rereadings and editing and and uh, so on and so forth that takes place for anything uh especially a book like this which is just shy of a hundred thousand words yeah, I'm curious, how long did it take from that, honestly, from that thought that was formulated maybe in Jeff's office to today, basically? How long was that process? About two and a half years, all told. And we had a conversation about it, and then we kind of went away from it for a few months, put together uh, a draft of a book proposal, worked that over a few times contacted some people we thought might be interested in contributing and, and some of them said yes some of them said no and then we put out a call for other contributors and gathered uh, a lot of uh, good good essay submissions and selected the best of those uh, and then uh, went through the process of uh, putting those into the volume editing them through and getting the uh, volume out so all told it was it was on the order of two and a half years Wow. Well, one thing I'll chime in. I'll chime in about that. Is one of the cool things it's been for me is I, I kind of this is my first horror book I've ever done, and Betsy is talking about this with when she's on. I didn't realize how much of a family the horror uh, fan 
uh, I don't know what the word is, just club is. Fan like base. This, this, yeah. Like, yeah, the fan base. Like, you start talking with horror people, and I went to some horror, like, uh, film festivals and stuff like that, and it just feels so damn familiar. It's amazing. I, I really yeah. like that. So I, I, I didn't realize that I would be making friends <laughs> with these people along the way, um, but, like, yeah, these horror on like Helen uh, Shin and Andrea Lasalle, these are just like really great people I got to meet through the through the anthology and then get to meet like William Vincent and Betsy Baker who have these amazing stories. It's it's pretty damn cool. Like I'm kind of addicted to it now. I'm doing another with McFarlane, I'm doing another book and the next one's gonna be Stephen King. And uh I really like this. I think it's because you get to feel like really connected, which I did not expect that at all, that horror was making me feel like having a family stuff, uh, but it does. It's just like really nice, great people that are that are fans of it. Oh yeah, that's that's really interesting. But it's very very true. I I mean, uh, it's it's interesting and it's neat to have a um, that connection because. Um, uh, but you're right. It's really it's really fascinating. Yeah, and I mean, the horror community is always nice and friendly, so that's always a plus. Yes, we are. Well, that was one of the things that, you know, 20 years ago, 25 years ago, when I started watching these films, uh, uh, when I was in high school and college, uh, really drew me to these films, because the more you, you watch these films and the more you learned about these films, you, you did start to plug into a sense of community around the horror. And that was certainly facilitated by the people that were involved in Evil Dead and how accessible and warm they are with the fans everywhere they go. Uh, and uh, uh, so that that that's uh, sort of one of the reasons I absolutely linked in to this subject a long time ago when I became a fan of these movies. I was just going to say, what's interesting, both Ron and, and Jeff and Paul and Tess, is that I'm not a huge fan of horror. I mean, I don't sit down on a weekend night and say, wow, what scary movie is on tonight? Let's just, you know, plug in here. But um, the, the people that make it, that are that are part of the family, you guys are right, that are part of the family, are just like you and I, really. Um, but I'm not particularly a fan of, of horror and scary stuff. So that's interesting, too, that you can still be in it, in, involved as you are with it, but... Um, it may not, may not certainly be my favorite genre. It it certainly wasn't mine. Uh, I've I used to yeah. teach uh, when I was teaching at Indiana University, where I did my degree. Um, I used to teach the horror movies class, and uh, with a with a co teacher named Rebecca Bauman, uh, and we we would sometimes teach uh, Evil Dead Two, and I would tell my students the story of how Evil Dead Two gave me the horror genre because when I was a little kid, like five years old or something, uh, my mom, one of my mom's middle school students babysat me and sort of forced me through a watching of Friday the 13th. And I couldn't watch horror movies for like almost a decade. Uh, they gave me nightmares. They freaked me out. And then one of my best friends next door, Darren, uh, one night he was uh, hanging out and said, let's watch this movie, Evil Dead 2. And, that, uh, and it was right before Army of Darkness came out. And so that uh, that movie sucked me in, uh, especially the humor of it. Uh, Bruce's sort of winks at the camera and his mugging for the camera uh, was there to sort of assuage the pure horror of it all for me. And, and after that, I became a fan of the genre again, or for the first time, I should, I suppose, I should say. Wow, that's interesting. Yeah, I um, I have to kind of say like I loved the Evil Dead too because. I like the scene where Bruce is, like, trying to cut off his hand and all that. And then once he does, he's trying to, like, put the books on top of the bucket to hold the hand down. And then when he finally gets the shotgun, he's, like, trying to shoot the hand. But the hand is, like, flipping him off and, like, just, like, waiting for him to reload the shotgun. I just always thought that was a really cool, funny scene as well. And it, and like you said, the, the whole way Bruce winks at the camera, it's like a nice little way to be like, I got this, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I, I have a quick question for Betsy, actually. I'm curious, is how, how much is improv? Like, how much is completely planned and how much is, is sort of in the moment? You mean while we were filming Evil Dead? Yeah, is that a hard question? I mean, I'm just curious. Uh, no, it's not a hard question. What's interesting, we get we we don't 
we get asked a variety of questions like, and, and in actuality, the script um, was only about 40 or 50 pages. And a lot of times, Sam would get very, very creative. Um, we would be greeted maybe, remember, we also still just had typewriters back then, but we might have been greeted with another page or an additional page, or he'd say, write this in and say this, or write this in and say that. So actually, there was some improv. Um, and, you know, the whole, the entire story about Linda's character turning from a devilish zombie into more of a um, frightening baby doll character was total improv um, based on a conversation I had with Sam one night, late one night, when I just said, you know, Sam, can we just talk about something here with, with um, Linda turning into this zombie once she has been possessed? And I said, you know what, my, you, you, you have Linda written as such a sweet, endearing, you know, innocent girlfriend that um, for her to turn zombie is just, you know, so off. I said, don't you think it would have more effect, maybe, if she were more of a sweeter, sweeter, you know, cracked porcelain baby doll thing. And he said, well, what would you do? What would you say? I said, well, instead of just a monster scream or a growl, we would just, flip her into a, almost a, a giggly, laughing, you know, a, a doll with a little pull thing that you just want to break open and stop that, you know, scary laugh. And you said, like what? And so I said, I don't know, like maybe just a laugh like this or a giggle like that. And I distinctly remember Sam going, oh, my God, that is so creepy. Okay, let's try this. <laughs> So you're right. There was a lot of improv. I had thought about that in the past. You, you know, it's you know, it's you know, it's funny. Beth says I, I was watching. They had like online top ten uh, uh, scariest moments in the history of film, and that was in the top ten. Like you doing that was was on. It was like it was. I think it's called Box Office Mojo or something. Uh, yeah, maybe I'm screwing up which one it was. But that that choice that you did had you listed as one of the top ten moments in the history of film, which is kind of pretty intense. <laughs> I I know that that's really interesting. <laughs> I know that. Yeah. See, and, and that's the other thing. Everybody, every time we discuss something or have a convention, we always learn something new about Evil Dead. It's incredible what the fans know, and I'm sure as you, Jeff, and Ron started to, you know, collaborate and then ask for collaborations from other people, you found some, like, fascinating information. Some no, of absolutely. Some of absolutely. Uh, it, was yeah. a, it was a fascinating process to find out what information was out there and how, how then we can build film scholarship and film theory on the back of existing scholarship and these films and this franchise. Uh, it, it was truly a remarkable uh, and fun process. Yeah, I bet. I bet. I I do have to say though, Betsy, uh, your your role as Linda when you were turned in the film, and like you were saying, you were like this like cracked baby doll version of a zombie instead of the gruesome looking ones like everybody else. I just have to say that uh, I loved how you did that. It was it was just great. Like you were you were like taunting like Ash. You were menacing. But it was different from how everybody else was doing it. Well, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> now, now you guys, um, um, just uh, kind of, you know, going to the second thing real quick, and we'll maybe get back to the book. It's, um, but um, you guys were mentioning that you guys are doing a event next weekend for. Um, April 13th, I believe you said 4 p.m. That would be specific standard time. Um, can you uh, tell us a little about what that event is and what, what's going on? Well, it's going to be at Dark Delicacy's uh, Home of Horror, and there is going to be such a big lineup that right now what I'm trying to do is look up that list of people. So if somebody wants to spell for me real quick, I'll, I'll get that list and I'll turn back in. Well, while Ron's so, looking yeah. it up, um, it's at Dark Delicacies in Burbank, California, and I think he's getting the information, the exact information. And it, you are right, it's at 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Um, it's a really, really popular um, horror film, book, um, memorabilia, uh, collectible store that's been in Burbank for many, many years. 
there's an interesting trivia um, about this is that Del Howison is the owner and he's originally from Michigan and Del and one of the actors in the original Evil Dead, um, Rich Demanacor, were roommates in college. And Rich Demanacor was chosen to play the role of Scotty, but he wanted to change his name for the film and he didn't know what to change it. So he took a bunch of names from his friends, one of them being Del, as in Del Howison, the owner of um, uh, Dark Delicacies, and became Hal Delrich for the movie. That was his, um, pro quote, professional name for Evil Dead as his character. And they've been friends for years. They've, they've been friends for years. And I, I got the information. So it's uh, yeah, Dark Delicacies, Homo Horror, and it's at uh, 3512 West Magnolia Boulevard in Burbank. And the cool thing is this is going to be kind of a major event that day because Monster Palooza is going on. So at 4 p.m. it'll be me, uh, Betsy, and Jeff, and then Bill Vincent, who is one of the fake shemps from Evil Dead, will be there. And that's at 4 p.m. And then at 6 p.m., we're going to have um, so Emmy winner uh, in Ash vs. Evil Dead, Army of Darkness, Evil Dead 2, the Evil Dead film composer. Joseph LaDuke is going to be there, and, and I'm pretty pumped about that because I'm a really big score a fan. I actually will sit, sit around at home and listen to horror film scores. <laughs> Sometimes my girlfriend's like, what are you doing? And I'm like, I, I like it. It's good. I love the music. Uh, but also <laughs> Creepazoids directors, David Dicatru and William Butler and film composer Guy Moon and 976 Evil 2, the Astro Factor film composer Chuck Serino and Jin, uh, film composer B.C. Smith. So there's going to be a bunch of uh, directors, film composer, uh, you know, uh, actors that, that are in the horror industry. And that's all at Dark Delicacies in Burbank. So after our event uh, at 4, I'm definitely going to stick around uh, for a bit at 6 o'clock because I would love to meet some of those uh, film composers especially. But, yeah, that's April 13th. And, and yeah, our event is April 46. Yeah, we're four to six, and then at, starting at six after is the it's the director, and then a bunch of film composers like Joseph Leduc will be there. And I do like Joseph Leduc. His 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 uh his uh, uh film scores are definitely creepy. I I I, I do listen to them. <laughs> <laughs> well, it sounds like a lot of fun. So I hope you guys will and. I'm surprised I'd never actually heard of that one, but I have heard of, like, Monster Palooza, so, hmm, interesting. I'll have to check out the details, mm -hmm. even though I'm, like, so far away on the other side of the uh, <laughs> United States, but I'll have to still check out all the cool stuff that's going on, too. Um, now, Jeff, um, how did you get into wanting to, you know... Well, you said you teach and stuff, but what made you really want to go into, like, the writing or editing field of, like, the making a book type of thing? Uh, well, this is, uh, my day gig is English professor, and I work, uh, work for the University of Houston, Victoria, and so writing about contemporary film and literature is my research area uh, that I worked on all through grad school, uh, and so living authors... Uh, especially independent press authors, small uh, small literary authors are what I focus on, but I'm also really, really interested in film and always have been. And so independent film and, and outside the mainstream film is where my interests always tend to lie in film. And so uh, besides being a fan of of just the Evil Dead series in general, uh, that, that interest in uh, independent American culture, things produced uh, from the roots up, that really drove me to want to kind of incorporate some of my interests with horror and Evil Dead into my research interests and my research publication. Uh, and so I've always been interested in writing. I've written for a lot of uh, small magazines. I've written for some large magazines. And these days I'm the managing editor of American Book Review. Uh, so, so writing books and writing scholarship is kind of what I do already. Uh, and that's, uh, that's an interest that goes back at least 20 years uh, from my decided not to uh, major in computing in college uh, and decided I wanted to look at stories and how stories were made uh, and talk to living authors. And, and uh, if I could find a way to do that for a career, that's what I was going to do. That's nice. I mean, congratulations on your success, too. And I mean, it's 
I mean, once you find something that you love, I mean, I would just say keep going for it, and eventually you'll get it after all the hard work. Ron, what about you? What uh, what inspired you to want to start writing or editing? To start, uh, um, oh God, that's kind of a big question. Uh, the 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 real answer, as far as when I want, what made me want to start writing is. When I was in the military, I was in the Navy, and then after that, the Air Force. But when I was in the Navy, we Desert Storm broke out, and I had wrote to a letter to my mom uh, about saying that a plane had been shot down off uh, off of our base, uh, which later it ended up being that it wasn't shot down. It was just uh, system malfunctioning, and it crashed. But uh, my mom wrote back a letter saying, um, were you on the plane? <laughs> And, and I and I realized, oh, she only has as much information as I'm giving her. And it was this really deep revelation for me of like, okay, now when I write, I have to really be detailed. Otherwise, she's not going to be able to fill in those gaps like magically. <laughs> she's not going to know what's exactly going on. So when I started writing letters home from that point on, I started like taking it really seriously because I'd sort of not put any effort into my writing ever. Even in high school, it was easy to get A's. So I would just like half-ass my homework and get A's on it. And so that changed everything for me. That's when I started like really respecting writing. And, uh, and then I got out of the military and I ended up doing a English degree like Jeff and just sort of loving language. And then, uh, for me, I, I'm really interested in, in horror and and uh so it's pretty fun now to be analyzing it because i think like a film like evil dead or evil dead 2 or army of darkness they say a lot of things about our society and so uh it's kind of fun to do that that analysis and give meaning to it but for for jeff it's pretty cool that he gets to relate that to his students so it's just basically taking taking whatever if it's a letter in the military or it's a film and just trying to really delve into the significance of it so so for me I, I mean i love i love words i love i love art i love you know cinema is just when i go in the movies i love when i step out and i get transformed and for me uh it was, it was kind of evil that too for me too was when a movie that i saw and i and i was just like i've never seen anything like that in my life um the comedy elements that sam raimi does i think are absolutely freaking brilliant because horror is not my favorite genre either it's probably if i had to pick number one it's probably comedy so if you do horror and comedy i am so on board for that like that is my favorite combination um so yeah it, and now getting added books like this is really fun this is like i have seven seven books out now and, and i want to do a lot more actually i'm i'm contracted for like I think five more books, so I will be <laughs> just with contractual obligations. I will be doing quite a bit more of them, but I, I love to do it. It's like I definitely found the thing that I love to do in this world, and I love making books. Uh, even if you look at examine the moment I'm doing right now, I'm a huge Evil Dead fan. It's pretty freaking cool that I'm on the phone with freaking Betsy Baker. Like that's kind of magical that that's happening. So I love that. Like this is like really oh, yeah. cool freaking thing. <laughs> yeah. Here I was just going to say, oh my god, I learned so much just in this brief phone call about you know how you and and Jeff met each other, and it's, it's such a story. It it really is. It's this to me those kind of stories are fascinating, and the fact that you you know, both decided to collaborate different opinions and thoughts and, and, and memories is, I, I, well, the feeling goes right back to you, Ron and Jeff, because it's just, it's been a lot of fun. And it's been fun to watch you, Ron, um, go through this journey, you know, because you've been really gracious in, in um, including me in a lot of this. And so I'm very grateful to that as well. It's like a Josh session here, isn't it, guys? <laughs> it's sitting there, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, it's much appreciated actually, um, because books of film scholarship. I mean, uh, we hope this would be a bestseller, but we also know, you know, this is not going to be on the end cap at the airport uh, for people to pick up, for example. Uh, but it's for people who who want to go deep on these films and and see how they connect to to, to film scholarship, to film theory, to philosophy. Um, and uh, uh, it's, a, it's a real effort uh, and a real labor of love to do a book like this, uh, especially if you can connect it to 
to uh, other things you're doing as well. Uh, and so we've we've really enjoyed working on this, and now we're really enjoying the the opportunity to talk about it and share it with everybody. Hey, hey Jeff, you don't know this. This is, and I'll just be fast with this, but this is an interesting point. So I have a, a, a two books that just came out last month. Actually, kind of three if you count this other small press one. Uh, it, but so I've been tracking on WorldCat. They have the this like when the libraries pick them up. And so for one book yeah. I have, it's called Un Undocumented. It's Great Lakes Poet Laureate, Poets Laureate on Social Justice. So all the sales for that book are in the U.S., like all of them. The Evil Dead book, it's just like I think all of the books except for one are overseas. The, 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 right now, it, Malaysia, Australia, Germany uh, picked up that book fast. I mean, right off, wow. the, right off, right off the gate. And that was revel that was a huge revelation for me of of the Evil Dead. Of course, it's a global book, and I did, for some reason I just I was delusional in my head thinking it was going to be a U.S. fan base, and I was completely wrong about that. Like that that is really truly a worldwide film, and and that that's pretty cool. I, di I didn't I didn't suspect that, and then when I started looking at the listings, I was like Malaysia, Australia, 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 Germany. I'm like, oh wow, that's really interesting. <laughs> Fascinating. That's uh, that's really yeah. good news. Yeah, that's yeah. a big accomplishment right there. Congratulations. <laughs> now, Betsy, I have to ask, um, what got you into wanting to become an actress? Uh, well, I th I enjoyed acting. I enjoyed uh, I enjoyed seeing shows. I enjoyed being part of. Um, you know, a troop or a group of people either, you know, putting together something. I mean, even from the time I was a little girl and I enjoyed going into that, you know, I still call it into that magical land of pretend. And um, so after I finished, I received a degree from uh, Michigan State, go green, big game today. Um, yeah. and, <laughs> <laughs> and was singing also, but came back, um, um, to sort of work more in my acting and um and as i said i i think in the essay is that i had an agent in the detroit area because i was doing commercials and a lot of industrial films it was a huge industrial film time back then in in michigan in the midwest and my agent had said that these three young men wanted to put together were thinking of putting together a horror movie and would like to meet with me which is not normally the way um you know, on an audition or meeting goes. It's usually, you know, they bring in a bunch of actresses or actors for an audition and then they choose from there. But they were still in the brewing sense of putting together something. So we actually met at, um, I wasn't sure about these people at all. And so we met during the day in a public restaurant. And I figured I agreed to meet there because I figured if they were dangerous or if they actually were just really wackadoodles and wanted to put me in the trunk of their car, I would be in a public place and um, I could scream and, and run away. And that's exactly what I thought. Um, you know, I was just covering my bases. As it turned out, I walked into this restaurant, and there were three of them, you know, I think all under 21 years old, so they couldn't have a beer. They were just all drinking, you know, Pepsis or Orange Fagos or whatever, and, you know, just waiting for me to show up. And so that's how, that's how this journey started with Evil Dead. But I had been acting throughout college and summer stock and um, even after college. That's awesome. I got a story for you guys. Um, so my fiance and I met in a very weird way. And we're known as the creepy couple here in Vermont as to our friend and family. And that's because when we met, it was through one of our uh, friends who was doing a photo shoot for, like, one of her series, like, Faces of Death or whatever. And I was supposed to be murdered in the snow, but unfortunately, the rain washed all the snow away. And when it came to time for me to um, do the photo shoot for that, uh, they decided to change it to their bathroom and bathtub. So I ended up getting all bloody and put uh, makeup on and stuff, and I had to lay in the bathroom. Well, anyway, so the idea was uh, I needed a killer. So Tessa at the time was 
over there doing her own food photo shoot. And when she was done with hers, uh, my, our friend was like, well, who wants to kill Paul? And Tessa, without any hesitation, just going, I do. And so. That not sound like that. <laughs> <laughs> I do. <laughs> anyway. I said, I'll do it. <laughs> yeah, I'll do it. So she takes my, my uh, battle, double bladed fantasy battle axe that I have and add the murder weapon. And that's how we met. By her, pretty much using my her my own weapon. So pretty against much, me. pretty much like our first meeting was I I killed Paul in the bathtub with a battle axe. Yeah, That's pretty much how we met. Yeah, and I can send you guys the photo of it afterward in the email <laughs> if you guys would like to see it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's, that's how we. <laughs> but yeah. No. Well, congratulations, you two lovebirds. <laughs> well, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, uh, we've been together for almost three years now, and um, I don't think I could have a better person to help me with this podcast and have to spend the rest of my life with anyway. With so because she's uh, she's uh, everything to me. So I think we all know that. But anyway, <laughs> we're not talking about our relationship. We're talking about. The Evil Dead book and the event that's going on. So, <laughs> let's get on topic. Now, is there yeah. anything that we are uh, that we haven't really touched on that you guys would like to ask, especially with Betsy? Betsy, do you have any questions for like Ron or Jeff? Well, I, yes, I actually I was going to ask Ron and Jeff. You guys are taking this book you know a long ways i mean it's going you're you're going to be at a number of places and a number of um bookstores in the next few months am i not am i not correct runs phenomenal <laughs> like that i think yeah <laughs> yeah yeah, right, I, I, have, right. yeah I, have, I have like 20 events uh, set up but I, I do have three books that just came out but um some of the events are for the the michigan state university press undocumented book and then i have a memoir called Post Traumatic that came out with it's a like four chambers press slash hoot and waddle it's called out of Arizona. So so some of the uh, events are for all three of the different books. So it's kind of a um a mix. But uh yeah I wanna I I wanna do more more stuff for, for this book for sure. A cool thing was when Bruce Campbell uh, posted a tweet about the book. I was like hold on. you know I had like I don't know two hundred and eighty eight likes and you know thirty retweets and stuff like that so i was like wow that's really nice and helpful for oh i know, I know. So cool. yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I a, like that. i'm asking out of curiosity is there a website or particular link that um people could go to to find out where you will be to um you know to 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 meet you and, and uh, get a copy of this book I think if you just type in uh, my name, I have my my website, and I, it has Book Torque 2019 on it. Um, okay. But uh, yeah, but uh, it's, I'm still organizing quite a quite a bit of, of events. So uh, yeah, I've been yeah, I just a lot to do, and I have a book coming out at the end of the year too. So it's been I'm dealing with that with that publisher working with them too. So it's been a little bit crazy. But uh, yeah, I'm trying to get everything done. I have a lot of emails I got to get through, but. But there's certain things I prioritize, like this. I knew it was going to be really fun, so this podcast. So I, I made sure, like, I wanted this to happen because I, I had a feeling it would be pretty cool to do. <laughs> and, and then, yeah, Betsy, I, I might as well. Uh, oh, 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 I'm sorry. I was just going to ask Betsy, what do you have going on now? You're, you're in like quite a. You have some projects coming out that you've acted in, right? Um. Yeah. Um. Uh. I'm actually on hold for a couple of things that I that I actually cannot talk about right now. But okay, I, okay, I was, all right. That's okay, that's okay. I was fortunate enough to uh, be a part of the cast of um, the HBO drama last summer called Sharp Objects with Amy Adams and Patricia Clarkson, which was really a lot of fun. And that was, you know, uh, sort of a whole mystery and thriller based on a book by um, Julian Flynn. And um, that was a whole different sort of genre, but it was mysterious as well. And it, you know, I, I was in four of the eight episodes, but each episode was really creepy for me to watch um, because they did such a good job with it. Um, so, and, and I enjoy comedy too. I, I enjoy comedy a lot and um, I 
did a uh, Life in Pieces last year. A couple of years ago, I did The Murder and, and uh, American Woman and um, uh, the, the Middle. and you know. But I've done uh, American Horror Story and True Blood. And um, oh. I have another film coming out, I think, later this year, but I don't think they have titled it yet. It's currently called The Untitled Miranda July Project. Project with um, Wow, I uh, love her. Yeah, uh, uh, and I did not know her. I wasn't aware of her before I worked with her on this. Oh, and, great uh, writer. Oh, but I think you can find it on IMDb. It's still called The Untitled Miranda July Project, which was really, really interesting. Um, so, you know, I'm still plugging along here. Still plugging along. Hey, what were you saying, Jeff? I interrupted you. Sorry about that. Sorry, uh, we've moved on. It's no worries. Oh, okay, okay, sorry. <laughs> This is just, um, I mean, I'm just glad that we're, that you guys are all able to talk with one another and we're all able to talk about, you know, the evil dead and stuff. And it's, it's quite interesting to hear all you guys saying that horror is not your favorite genre, but that's, uh, that's okay. <laughs> but, um, you know, I mean, I guess we all have our own preferences and that's what makes us all different because if we all like the same thing, well, then that just gets boring real fast. <laughs> but, you know, um, well, I'll correct. I'll correct the record there. I, when I was younger, it wasn't my favorite, but uh, uh, for me, it is. Okay. It is pretty much my favorite ever since I was about fifteen or sixteen and started in with these films. Yeah, uh, I watch it quite a bit of horror too. For someone, it's not my number one. Like I'm a big comedy freak, but but I, I definitely watch a lot of horror. Like I, you know, I can I can hold down a conversation about the horror genre. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I think my f fiance and I have to always watch something horror. I mean, even if it's just uh, even on like YouTube, like Crick TV or something, it's always something horror. Uh, if it is not horror, uh, we do watch we do watch other things besides horror. I think what Paul's getting at is we mainly watch a lot of horror, but we do watch comedy and stuff like that. Like we're not like strictly horror, but. We do enjoy the genre. Yes. We love it. But I think that's because I fell in love with the horror genre when I was like seven or eight years old when I first got introduced to Bram Stoker Dracula. But that's a whole new different story. <laughs> One thing I was noticing too, I don't, I don't know if Ron or Jeff, if you would be able to answer this, but um, I noticed when I was looking up your book around for certain websites, um, a couple areas were saying that it was already out, while other areas were saying pre-order. So, could you clarify that? Like, is it it's out? out now? You can you can get it. Uh, you can get it on Kindle. You can get it on Amazon. It is out now. I'm holding the copy in my hand. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, could I? If if my memory uh, served me right here, I think it was like Barnes and Noble that I saw it saying pre-order. So I, that's why I was kind of like, hmm, what's going on here? So nice. Hey, I, I would recommend that pe people try to try to buy your book from from uh, smaller bookstores. Anyway, I'm not I'm not big oh, yeah. on the, the mass corporate you know Amazon type stuff. It was like if, if you can just go to your local bookstore, any of your local bookstores if they don't have it, they can order it just like Amazon. So that way you can keep your local bookstores alive. I'm a big fan of local Absolutely. bookstores. So, Absolutely, yeah. I can't second that enough. Um, and I'm going to triple uh, that. We'll, we'll buy it from Dark Delicacies next weekend when we're there to sign it. Yeah. Nice. Well, I'll have to look around our local bookstores here. We got two of them. So maybe um, maybe I can pick one up and uh, have it for maybe the future if I ever meet up and see you guys here in the East Coast at sometime down the road. So it would be nice. I can't. I honestly can't think of anything else because I think we talked on the book pretty good from what I can do anyway. And the event you said is next weekend, the thirteenth uh, at four o'clock. Now, is there um, is is tickets available through their the? No, it's website? free. No, it's free. free and open it's to free. the public. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Why can't there ever be something cool like this around here? <laughs> I have no idea. Set it up. Set it up yourself. That's the way I do. Like, if I want to do, so, like, if book tours or whatever, just set it up. Just set up a, 
you know, I know Crimson, I just, Crimson Screen Horror Film Festival just emailed me today, and I have a film that, a uh, screenplay that's a finalist, and, like, those guys, like, Tom, Tommy, you know, who, who set that thing up, that's one of the best uh, film festivals in the whole entire United States. It's for, for horror. It's amazing. You should actually think about going to it if you're a horror fan. It's down in uh, uh, Charleston, South Carolina. But they just set it up. They, he was saying the exact same thing about, oh, I wish there was a film festival that was cool in South Carolina. And then he was like, I'll just do it myself. And now it's one of the best, best horror film festivals in the United States. So set, set it up right where you're at. You know, you're, have 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 a uh, have whatever your idea is. If it's a film festival or you just want to have horror authors or something like that. It's not that hard to do. People people want to. But, you know, they want community and they want the people, people like to, to do events like that, you know. Um, so, yeah, just to just, just, uh, put, put it together. That echoes, uh, you know, sort of the, that echoes the uh, DIY attitude that, that comes at us from the Evil Dead, you know. Yeah, if there's not yeah, a true. film out there, you make yeah. it. If there's not a festival out there, you make it. If there's not a podcast out there, you make it. Yeah. If there's not a book out there, you make it. That's true. That's very, very true. Uh, uh, I just was going to say, if, if we are heading towards wrapping up, I, I do have three films that I'm associated with, and I know the, produ- the directors, well, producers too, would really appreciate it that I like, give, like, give a shout out. But um, so I have a short film called America. It's kind of crime horror that got shot in Romania uh, by MC2 mm. Film, and so that's out now doing like a small little uh, short film festival circuit. And then I was uh, a, a killer <laughs> in the film Short Straw with Joe Pantoliano from The Sopranos and The Matrix and Rockman Dunbar from Sons of Anarchy and uh, Naomi Grossman from American Horror Story. Um, so that's done and, and uh, fully, uh, what's it called? Post completed, you know, it's, it's post post production. And then uh, Flesher, I played the lead role, the title role uh, of a serial killer. So I, I moved up from being a killer to being a serial killer in that one. And uh, that's my first time being playing a title role in a film. So that's a short. Uh, John Johnson right now is uh, doing it's in the post production phase, um, but I did want to give a shout out to those three yeah. movies and thank thank those directors Steve Balderson for uh, Hoya Kuchata, uh George Kennard and uh, and uh, John Johnson. So yeah, so I appreciate that. It's really uh, it's acting in, in horror is pretty freaking cool too. Like that's that's, uh, that's I, I would definitely do more of that. But by the way, Betsy, I, 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 you, I, 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 when I look on your IMDb, I see like a gap after Evil Dead. Were you not like sort of addicted to, to horror after you got done with the shoot or were you still exhausted? You were like, I need a break from that. No, I actually, you know, I did a couple of TV movies and I had done some commercials and then I actually got married and had children and I actually, for there was a break in that time that I actually stopped acting for a bit and I formed um, my own company. It's, it's a long, colluded story, but I formed a company that actually provided motorhomes and trailers, something we didn't have for Evil Dead, um, uh, to commercial and production companies. And oh, so nice. I provided them. At what we did, my, what we did was I would buy a new motorhome um, that you would go camping in or traveling in, and we would gut them, and we would take out the bedrooms on the kitchens per se, and we would put production facilities in and hair and makeup areas in. And so I did that for many years. And then I um, okay. stepped, back in, stepped back into acting. So there's, you know, what, that's what, a really good question. That's, that's why that lull is in there. What made you get, what, what, what was the bite that, like, like the, that made you want to get back into it again? That's, well, interestingly enough, um, Teresa Tilly, a.k.a. Sarah York, and I are very good friends. We live out here in California. And um, I was contacted in late 2001 because they were doing a re uh, um, a reconfiguration of Evil Dead, I guess a, a better master of it. And they were performing, they were showing it at a really popular large theater here in Hollywood called American Cinematique Theater um, at the Egyptian. And they invited me to come as a guest. And um, I had not, this was, this was exactly when I was not aware that Evil Dead was such a cult classic. And when they called me, I thought it was a crank call, and I hung up on them. <laughs> and they called me back. I said, no, this guy's really desperate. I mean, he's really, really desperate to bug me. He said, no, 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 really. And he mentioned somebody's name that I knew, that, and that's how they got my name and number. And so we, long story long, we went to the, um, the premiere of this new remastered, redigitized, Redigitalized 
Evil Dead. And I was sitting and visiting with Rob Capert, you know, the executive producer, and we had a lovely, all had a lovely evening together. And Rob sort of said to me, he said, I don't know why you didn't, why you're not still acting. I said, well, I took a break. I mean, we have two kids that are growing. They're in, you know, middle school and elementary school now, and, and that's the focus for me. And, and I had this other business. He said, well, when they're older, you should get back into acting. And I really felt I, I was, it was a very kind thing for him to say, and I was really flattered. And um, that actually, that evening began the, um, the thought process in Teresa and uh, in our mm. heads to form the Ladies of the Evil Dead. And I really took mm. to heart what Rob said, and I thought it was very gracious and kind of him to say. So I sort of mm. jumped back in with very, um, with very nervous feet um, about nine and ten years ago. Mm. Interesting. So, yeah, that's a whole other trivia story. Yeah, Rob seems like he's a really nice guy. He was going to write a blurb for the the book, but he actually didn't have time. But when I was was when I was emailing with him, he seemed like a really kind dude. Very lovely. Very lovely. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Cool. Now, um, Betty, we know we uh, we heard what you got going coming out um, in the near future. Uh, Jeff, is there anything that you're working on that's coming out? Yeah, I'm. Uh, I, like I said, I'm an English professor, so my my uh, two areas of interest are contemporary literature and contemporary film, and clearly where the Evil Dead fits and all that. Uh, but right now, I'm working on a book called Understanding Amy Hempel uh, about one of uh, who I consider one of America's greatest short story writers. And in fact, she just had a new book come out about two weeks ago uh, that's fantastic called Sing to It. Uh, but she's a she's a fantastic writer. Uh, and that book will be out, uh, it's a book of scholarship. It'll be out sometime in 2020 from the University of South Carolina Press. And then I'm always uh, uh, out to promote uh, the magazine where I'm managing editor, which is called American Book Review, www.americanbookreview.org. Uh, and we're a magazine that reviews uh, literature from small and independent presses all across the country. And we've been around since 1977. And I'm in my seventh year. Uh, working as managing editor for them. So uh, we just put out a new issue, uh, and it'll be available in the next week or two about graphic fiction, uh, edited by uh, Frederick Luis Aldama, a very, very good uh, graphic fiction uh, professor uh, from Ohio. So uh, that's uh, that American Book Review uh, is uh, available for subscription, and we come out six times a year. Nice. Uh, that's when you have to check it out. Ron, you were mentioning something too. Um, what were you planning on working on, or what would you like yeah, to work on? Yeah, I'm I'm I've, I'm contracted for five more books so I, with uh, Michigan State University Press. There's one that can't really talk about yet, but uh, then the the Stephen King book with McFarlane, and at the end of the year, I have a book called My Ancestors Are Reindeer Herders, and I am melting in extinction. The collection of fiction, uh, nonfiction, and poetry that I wrote that's coming out with Loyola University, Maryland's Press. And then I have a book with Wayne State University Press that I'm uh, co editing with uh, Yasser Morsi, who writes for The Guardian, and um, Leila Abdullapoulos. And, uh, and then I have a poetry book with Main Street Ray coming out next year called I've, I Have Been Warned Not to Write About This. Um, so, yeah, there's those five projects. So that's, that's quite a bit going on. I'm kind of. I'm actually like on the breaking point right now where I, I might just actually just go full time with writing because if I can, if I keep up that level of output, I think I can basically survive off my writing, which has been something I've been sort of working my whole life towards. And actually I didn't think it was going to happen. That's why I was like just constantly manically looking for uh, teaching jobs, but I wasn't finding them. So the more I wasn't finding teaching jobs, the more I was just like, well, then I better write, 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 write. And so I'm kind of actually on the cusp right now. I think uh, I might just go full time with the writing because I have, as long as I keep up that many contracts, I'm constantly having books out. I think I can, I might be able to do that. So it's kind of an interesting point in my life right now. Yeah, I've known Ron 10 or 12 years now, uh, uh, since about the time your first novel came out. And uh, yeah, he's always redefined busy for me. Um, he's, uh, he's a, his, his output's phenomenal. Uh, he's a great short story writer, a great novelist, uh, an actor. He really is, uh, he really is a renaissance man in a lot of this stuff. That's awesome. Well, 
you know, when you really get to know somebody for 12, 13 years, you, it's, I, I almost look at it as you don't really necessarily call them a friend anymore. They're like maybe like a brother to you. Like maybe maybe Ron is like a brother in, to you in your eyes there, Jeff, or maybe not. But, um, you know, because maybe because it sounds like you guys always work together and you guys seem to uh, get along really well and just collaborate real well. And I mean, hopefully, uh, we get to definitely see more stuff come out from both of you. And oh, that'd be exciting. Yeah. It, it's I, would, nice. I would totally do it. I would definitely do another book with Jeff. I was trying to get him to do this oh, Stephen yeah. King book, but he needs a break. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The magazine, the, uh, the magazine I edit is about a third the length of this book every eight weeks. Uh, and, uh, yeah, it grinds, grinds a bit. It's a, it's a joy and a pleasure to do and a real privilege to do, but it's a, it's a lot of work. Awesome. Um, now before, uh, before I close this out too, now, is there any like plugs that you guys have where people can keep up to date with what's coming out and what you guys are working on or, um, or is there really not much of a way to keep track of what you guys are doing? Like, and I guess what I mean by plugins, if you're not familiar, is like, do you guys have like a Facebook page, uh, Instagram, Twitter, website where we can just come on and see what's going on in the world of you guys to keep up with everything? Yeah, you, could, I, I uh, you can Twitter. So yeah, yeah you can follow to. me on. Uh, well, yeah, I don't. I, 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 I probably learned to do ahead. Twitter, Instagram. I don't do either one, but. You know, you can, I'm on Facebook and, um, yeah, I have a website, BetsyBaker.net. It's not a great, it's, you know, <laughs> I do my best. Um, but these guys probably have a lot more links and a lot more, uh, connections and Facebook pages with everything that they're, they're doing in, you guys are so busy, you do. Well, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't post a lot and I'm not very active on social media, but I do have Facebook and, and you can find me on Twitter at Jeff.Sarton. Nice. And I know Ron's fairly active as well. And so if you search for him by name, you can find his work as well. Yeah, my, my accounts are private, but if you're a horror fan, I'll just look and I just read your thing. It just says you're a horror fan. I just add you immediately. <laughs> well, you guys are more than welcome to find us on Facebook if you'd like to keep in touch Absolutely. with us as well. And um, yeah. I, I also want to just take this time to say thank you guys so much for allowing us to talk with you. Um, I, I'm i going to apologize that I feel like I'm like kind of dead, like dead of trying to figure out what is coming out of my mouth when it comes to trying to figure out what words I should put together. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, you know, um, it's not often where, I, you know, people like, Tessa and I, who I find us to be, you know, small people, kind of like nobody's really because we're just small. We're not like pretty well known and have a chance to talk with like somebody like you guys, Jeff and Ron, and especially Betsy Baker. I mean, when when Ron sent me that email and to schedule this roundtable, as I'm calling it, and I saw your name, Betsy, I was just like, uh, are we are we sure we're ready for for this so i hope we did okay with you and everybody here so i mean um very kind. I, I thought it was great and i i actually learned a lot so thank you thank you for teaching me more things paul and especially ron and jeff i learned a lot today so thank you sure well, yeah i'm looking forward to next weekend that'll be fun me too me too <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you guys so will have you... To let us know how it went yeah yeah we will we will the book again is The Many Lives of the Evil Dead, Essays on the Cult Film Franchise, edited by Ron Rickey and Jeff Sarton from McFarland Press. Awesome. Well, thank you. Yeah, thank you guys. We really well, appreciate you. your time. Well, no, thank you very much. Thank you. It. <laughs> oh. And thank you for everybody else that stuck around and listened to this amazing little roundtable. And... I must say, if you are around for the event next weekend, make sure you go to it. Otherwise, Betsy and Ron and Jeff will find you and slap it. No, I'm joking. They won't <laughs> prank you. But please go support them and d definitely say hi for us, for me and Tessa, because we won't be able to make it. But um, 
definitely if they come around the East Coast, we'll definitely have to uh, plan to meet up and say hi for once and uh, or for now that we kind of semi met, but now we can actually meet in person. There we go. <laughs> anyway, anyway, anyway. Thank you for so much for listening. I was Paul Doski today. And I'm Tessie Baker. And like always, people, stay scary.